can you really continue to do that going forward if you're going to be a top team and you're going to we'll come back to it control and see how games where you know you're the team who is dictating things no no you can't well hello again from here inside Stamford Bridge now buckle up guys there's an awful lot to get through here and the only place to start is right at the very end and with the goal Newcastle conceded in the third minute of stoppage time to send the game to a penalty shootout where ultimately it was no surprise they went on and lost given how deflated they were after surrendering that lead right at the air uh, right at the death i've just nearly been just nearly been soaked there and that would be the tin hat uh, that would be the tin hat on tonight and i'll uh, be honest entering stoppage time i thought i thought newcastle's victory would have been just about deserved now how they got there we can talk about that in just a second but i honestly thought as the second half went on they were comfortable it was less to do with control and more to do with resistance and i thought the likes of jamal lascelles were absolutely fantastic but Chelsea, Chelsea were toiling. Chelsea had run out of ideas, and as I've just spoken about with some of the guys who ordinarily uh, cover them here at Stamford Bridge, you know, it looked like it was always going to be a mistake from a Newcastle player rather than a moment of inspiration uh, f from a Chelsea player that did force the penalties, and, and so it proved. And again, it was on Trippier who was the, you know, it's Trippier again now. That's five mistakes, I think, in the last three games that have led to goals. And to break it down, the cross comes in and in fairness in mitigation you know it does skip up but when the ball skips up he should do anything but what he does which is headed back into the goal mouth where Mudrick pounces and, and Mudrick scores now his best option is perhaps to duck to let the ball go by him or to flick it, flick it back over his head or to, to, you know, to, to, to glance it away for a corner anything but what he, what he did do now we'll get on to, to, to his run of form and whether he should have been on the pitch at, at that point I, I, I think you know I think it's I think it's it's, it's real after time and to say why was Trippier there? He's not in a good place at the moment. I think when you when you're bringing on at half time an England fullback and a player who's been just about your player of the season, I don't think you can turn around and then uh, and then say why was he there? Now it was then no surprise when he went and missed a penalty. I thought his head was scrambled. I think a more valid question is should he have then taken a spot kick? But the goal, the goal that that ultimately undoes them. What can can Martin Dubravka do something different? I think having only seen one replay back in the press box, by the way. I think the Bravka commits to coming for the cross, and if he if he fully commits, does he get there? If he, if he, if he keeps to that, maybe can he get fingers on it? I, I don't know. I I suspect that he might have been able to. He doesn't. He stops, and when the ball does then land where it lands, Mudrick has left for what what felt like it looked a pretty easy finish. The Bravka was was caught in no man's land to a degree, but I wouldn't attach too much blame with him. You know, this goal, the goal is on is on Trippier, and I will say it was harsh on Newcastle because, like I say, while. I didn't think they had control, and I want to come back to that. I thought I thought they defended well. You know, a word for for Jamal Lascelles, and I'll come on to the merit stars. I thought I thought Lascelles headed and kicked everything from the moment moment Newcastle took the took the lead in the first half. I thought I thought he was absolutely brilliant, and he definitely didn't deserve to be on a losing side tonight. But how did they get themselves in that position? Well, like I said, you know, it was more about resistance than control. And this comes back to the midfield. When will we see a day where where Newcastle defend the lead with with comfort with with, I keep on coming back to that same word doing a control back to the midfield yes Bruno had put himself about tonight and he was here there and everywhere he made the brilliant block in the first half but you can't cough up that much of the ball and not expect things like that to ultimately happen if you are giving up so much so much possession and so much territory and from the moment Newcastle got their goal through Callum Wilson and the goal just there for the first time ever really it seems as if the, the switched formation went from a 4-3-3 to a 4-5-1 sat back uh, and yeah you know, I think between the goal and half time we saw stat that Chelsea had 80% possession and can you really continue to do that going forward if you're going to be a top team and you're going to we'll come back to it control and see how games where you know you're the team who is dictating things no no you can't but in the isolation of tonight given everything that's gone before and the disappointment of the of the Milan game I thought I thought they sound like I'm contradicting myself here. I'm, I'm not, you know, my head's as scrambled as Kieran Tripp is after that, bearing in mind, I never just had to absolutely rip up a match report. But what I'm trying to say is that I think in the isolation of here tonight, uh, the manner in which they got from 1 0 on 16 minutes to 1 0 in the 93rd minute was, was okay. They, they, they deserve praise for that, you know, and it's ultimately it's an individual mistake that has undone them. What they did here tonight was just about enough to, to put them in the semi final. and it's because of the error that they're not and then I think I just said this before that, you know, going into penalties I've got to quickly start writing two different versions of which team wins on penalties and, and which team doesn't given the deadline I've literally got 30 seconds after the last kick to get it filed and I'll be honest I committed even before spot kick was taken 
to my very first top that I wrote was was Chelsea winning. I just thought from that point onwards, the, from the moment of the goal, Newcastle were, were flat, were deflated, and why did Trippier step up and take a penalty? You know, we've should he have should he have been on the pitch? Uh, I've already said I've named. I've got no problem with him. When we can't help any query a player like Kieran Trippier coming on. You know, come on. And in the second half, he was part of a like I say, part of a team who a defence who did well. You know, they they did okay. Uh, it was more the inability to either nick a goal on the break and a second goal threaten anything from an offensive point of view really in there but then Trippier going into the penalty shootout <laughs> I use the word inevitable about Newcastle getting beat when Trippier stepped forward there was an inevitability about, about him missing his and there's lots of questions coming in you know where is he at where is, where is his head at and this was a question asked of Eddie Howe a direct question uh, and he said no you know here in Trippier is a, is a top top player and they've got to, to rally around him now. He doesn't look well in him in himself in many ways in a, in a strange way to see you know you, you see in his, in his face that he looked haunted down at Everton and then he goes into the Spurs game where uh, on reflection he probably needed a breather in that one rather than the rather than the last two and you know he, he's then now done for another goal down there the suspension against Fulham last week's a blessing I said to you in the preview video yesterday, Eddie Howe hinted he didn't want to use him uh, here. Didn't sorry, he didn't want to start with him here. He's come on at half time. Emil Kraft, by the way, has got a nasty gash in his leg. That's why Trippier came on. Uh, but yeah, you, you, you're questioning now. Do you do you put him in going down to down to Luton on on Saturday? You know, his head must be must be absolutely scrambled. And it's not a criticism. It's just a reflection of where he's at. You know what I think of Kieran Trippier, but does he look like a player? He was in need of coming out of a team at the time when Newcastle probably can't afford to take him out of a team. Well, yeah, he probably does, and that's a big decision for, for Eddie Howe to make. Now, Newcastle's goal, just to, to, to recap, you know, Wilson goes through, and, and I, it, it's a calamitous concession from Chelsea, I'll be honest. Wilson goes through, and I say to my colleague Adrian Kajumba, who was with me, I said, he lose this. He didn't seem to have control of the ball. Uh, twice he lost control of it, and twice Chelsea almost give it back to him. Nonetheless, he's there, he's put himself in that position, and he, and he finishes. We lament VAR, and I think on a video a few weeks ago, I said how oh, VAR gets a hell of a lot more right than it gets wrong, and if we didn't have it, we'd soon be talking about more incorrect decisions than we were, than we were right. Well, here tonight, no VAR at this stage of the competition, doesn't come in until the semi-finals, and Chelsea would have been down to 10 men inside 90 seconds. Caicedo runs his studs down the back of Anthony Gordon's calf and Achilles. That, by the way, we think was the reason... Uh, nearly got soaked again there. Uh, that, by the way, we think was the reason Gordon came off in the second half. Uh, the, the, the after effects of that, as opposed to a hamstring, Caicedo would have been sent off, absolutely, and then Levy Colwell on the stroke of half time, the injury which ultimately forces Emil Kraft to go off when he lands his stud, uh, studs on his shin. So, so there you go, guys. VR with it tonight. Newcastle might just have been uh, in the semi finals without all of that, that penalty heartache. But the three stars, uh, I think Jamal, I've already touched on this, haven't I? Jamal Lasalle, I thought that was arguably one of his best games yet in, in black and white. I thought he really held it together at the back. Sven Botman was only ever going to play 45 minutes, uh, you know, with Botman. With Burn, I thought the cells was the one who uh, who underpinned good resistance. I use that word again: resistance, if not control. And it comes back to, you know, when is this midfield away from home, especially, going to keep the ball? When is the front unit going to keep the ball and and just show something different than than what they did there, and, and ultimately what they did in the, the final half hour against Milan as well? You know, I think this sounds like a bit of a broken record here, but uh, anyway, yeah, three stars goes to. Uh, Jamal Lascelles, two stars. I'm, I'm, I'm going to give it to Tino Livermento. I think and again, I, I don't think these two stars and the, these one stars are, are massively strong. But I thought I thought Tino Livermento coming back here. I thought you know I thought he was he, he was energetic. Uh, he was up against a couple of Chelsea wired men who who could have caused him problems. But I, but I don't think they did. I think uh, I think Livermento did well. And the one star as well, even though I thought he did, uh, I, I thought he faded in the game, but I thought Louis Miley had a, had a tremendous first 20, 25 minutes. Uh, you know, he's right in front of us where we were in the press box on this on this right-hand side at times. Uh, and everyone, you know, London reporters were, were, were commenting to me, wow, you know, who, who is this boy? They read about him at the weekend, but they, they wanted to know more. And I just thought he was, I thought he had a, he had a good game, even though, like most of them in the second half, it was more what he did with, without the ball in terms of just running around, really. Uh, certainly in terms of his, his impact on the ball. Uh, I thought he, he perhaps could have done more, like, like many of them could have done uh, in the second half. But yeah, Louis, Louis, Louis Miley takes the one star. Now, what has Eddie Howe just said to us downstairs there? Well, yeah, he thought he said he thought his team defended well. I think he's pretty much 
echoed, he hasn't echoed what I've said, is, have I echoed what Eddie said? <laughs> yeah, I think that's the, way the, that's the way it works. But uh, yeah, he said the team defended well and it, it was a pretty short press conference because of the penalties and the delay. They've got to rush off to get a flight back to, to Newcastle. He was asked questions on the performance in general. Uh, he spoke about the injuries, Kieran Trippier, the need to, to rally around him. The one question he wasn't asked, again, it was cut short after five or six questions because they, they did have to get off there and Pochettino was late in with his press conference. Uh, it was about Lewis Hall and... Lewis Hall has come here tonight and they've got dispensation from Chelsea to play him and they haven't played him. A fit player who, when you've got injuries, when you've lost two, you've lost Kraft, you've lost Gordon, you've had to bring on uh, Matt Ritchie. A lot of time on Matt Ritchie here, of course, it was the one who missed in the spot kick, the decisive one there. Why isn't Lewis Hall coming on? I think when we see Eddie again on Friday, even though it dominated largely questions last week, I think those are valid questions we, we have to explore again. And, whether he is going to stay at the club beyond this season now now the information we have back after that press conference what caused all the headlines was the likelihood was he would he would remain the newcastle player there was that expectation but i'm beginning begin to have my doubts now especially coming here tonight when you think it would be a game in which he'd have a, a point to prove I, I i don't know if he is going to be if he is for all intents and purposes a newcastle player even though this is still his parent club why not bring him on and i don't know the, the it increasingly beginning to feel that there's something something amiss there but those are questions we ask and that's digging as as journalists we've got to do so hopefully we'll have uh, we'll have more on that over the over the next few days so yeah what do the next few days the next few weeks bring well that's two cup exits now in the space of six days in a season which promised so much they've, they've got to respond now they've got to go and win an away game at Luton only one away win in the league again you know that remains the, the, the Sheffield United game I've made my feelings known about their away performances and their, their away form quite a lot recently uh, I think Luton is, is absolutely huge for them on, on, on Saturday now uh, and then the Sunderland game I mean wow what what emphasis that takes on giving uh, it is the, the only remaining piece of silverware for one but also you know the, the, the pressure after two cup exits like I've just said in the space of six days they cannot on so many levels afford a third down the Sunderland I don't think they will you know I think they are I think they are more than good enough to, to go there and win but but wow the pressure has just, just cranked up another notch after events of the of the last week well guys I've talked for, for long enough now I think uh, thank you again for watching please do hit like please hit subscribe and please comment as well you know the debate below the line is great I try to reply to to as many as possible also in the description there's my link to uh, Daily Mail Match Report and also my colleague Adrian Kajumba his work his work from tonight as well so yeah yeah, please stay logged on guys again lots more to come over across uh, all our mail platforms over the next few days so if you are watching this and traveling back up to newcastle uh, please have a safe trip and uh, i'll see you again in a couple of days time okay goodbye